Many physicists believe that string theory is our best chance at unifying gravity and quantum mechanics into a single theory of everything. However, a different viewpoint holds that the idea is essentially pseudoscience, because string theory seem extremely, if not impossible to test. Concerns regarding the vast array of potential universes that string theory can describe have been raised by numerous string theory detractors. The prospect that anything could be predicted by superstring theory, is likely destroyed by the possibility of 10 to the power of 500 consistent distinct vacuum states. It is likely that there will still be a sizable enough number of these states, even if one only chooses those states from this huge set whose attributes coincide with current experimental data, so that one can obtain pretty much any value for the findings of any new observation. Welcome back to my channel. As it turns out, inflation theory, the most widely accepted hypothesis of what occurred during the universe's early moments following the Big Bang, has a difficulty being described by string theory. The most convincing theory for why universe is structured as it is, and how it got that way, is inflation. In a sense, inflation explains how the cosmos came into existence out of nothing. According to the notion, the early cosmos went through a period of rapid expansion. Random quantum vacuum blips were enlarged by the process, becoming the galaxies and other objects in our environment. When attempting to understand why magnetic monopoles are not visible in the universe today, Alan Guth originally postulated inflation in 1979. He discovered that general relativity predicted that a positive energy fake vacuum would cause space to expand exponentially. There is currently no experimental evidence that would unmistakably point to any of these models, as being a correct fundamental description of nature. This lack of experimental evidence is due in part to theoretical and mathematical challenges, as well as the extremely high energies required to test these theories experimentally. Many critics of string theory have expressed concerns about the large number of possible universes described by string theory, but I will not bet on string theory being dead yet. Others do, but to say that string theory is old school, pure theoretical framework that never will be tested, this is for sure true, no argue here. It is still unclear if a metastable, positive cosmological constant can coexist with string theory. Einstein's general theory of relativity has the essential characteristic of being background independent, which means that the formulation of the theory does not in any way favor a specific space-time geometry. The fact that string theory is not clearly background independent has been one of its key points of contention since its inception. All other conceivable geometries are given as perturbations of the fixed reference geometry for space-time, which must normally be specified in string theory. Much of the effort that has been done on string theory is well deserved because it is a strong, well-motivated hypothesis. Its inherent defects are intimately linked to its strengths, which is the main reason it has so far failed. Of course, the narrative isn't over yet because string theory could very well turn out to be a portion of the reality. Why we have invested so much time and effort on string theory is not the fundamental question, rather, it is why we haven't invested nearly as much in alternatives. Call it how you want, but string theory is an accurate mathematical theory. As a theory it works, but again, the problem is, how can it be tested? But how string theory came into being? Here is a very brief history. Many physicists were using scattering amplitudes to learn about hadron physics. It was known as the S matrix theory. The local quantum field theory was proposed to be replaced by the S matrix theory as the fundamental idea of elementary particle physics. Due to its viability as an alternative to quantum field theory, which was hampered by the zero interaction phenomenon at strong coupling, this had a significant impact in the 1960s. It resulted in the development of string theory when it was applied to the strong interaction. A formula for the scattering amplitude of two particles was suddenly noticed as more than it was, and it was enough to start it all. A good deal of work on it, involved Veneziano, and then Susskind. Having the inspiration of seeing the scattering of two particles as a string, is indeed something worth mentioning. The idea that resembled the photon scattering formula, in which an atom is nothing more than a harmonic oscillator with a nucleus connected to an electron by a spring. 
The photon is re-emitted after the electron absorbs it. The spring begins to vibrate when the photon is absorbed, and it continues to oscillate until the photon is re-emitted. It is always a theory in flat space-time, or in anti-de-sitter space, it is always a mathematical structure with a lot of supersymmetry. Gravity, quantum mechanics, entanglement, they are all derived from string theory. In the last 20 years, we have learned a lot about gravity and its relationship to quantum physics. People don't talk about string theory as much as they did, despite the fact that have started their careers out of string theory study. Now people discuss much about entanglement, quantum information, and qubits, but in order for them to be precise and convincing, maybe all that need to be placed inside a string theory perspective. A significant contribution to mathematical rigor and real-world study cases was made by string theory. If the string theory mathematics weren't supporting what the physicists were doing, I don't think we would have as much confidence in what we're doing, sounds self-reassuring but I believe it's true. It doesn't describe the world we live in if we apply a very restrictive definition of what we mean by string theory, that mathematically exact supersymmetric phenomenon. The real world is not supersymmetric and exists in a space close to a de Sitter space for all practical purposes. It doesn't need to be now, but in the very far future of our universe, it will start to resemble more and more to a de Sitter space. I am aware that a more expansive, more complete and more precise definition of string theory is needed. The essential query is how to broaden the concept given that quantum physics and gravity are part of string theory. How can we turn it into a reality-based theory? The precise mathematical structure, which incorporates both gravity and quantum mechanics, is what we do know, and that is a good thing. However, we are unsure of how to move it into de Sitter space without making it supersymmetric. Anyone who asserts that string theory is true, in my opinion, is simply speculating that there may be a version of it that we do not now possess. A quantum system's evolution is thought to be unitary, meaning that it can be reversed. Therefore, if you know the current state of a closed system, one that is not disrupted, you also know its past and future. Stephen Hawking claims that it is impossible to know the past since anything sucked into a black hole just disappears and cannot be recovered from the Hawking radiation that escapes, makes for a good point at first glance, and a terrible one, because information or chunks of the universe are disappearing. That basically breaks physics and quantum mechanics laws. Stephen Hawking believed it had to be right, while others believed it had to be wrong. And from the general relativity and black holes, to string theory, it was a natural, smooth transition. In 2004 an idea has been proposed, the fuzzball theory, which compared black holes to enormous, chaotic balls of yarn that grow bigger and messier as more matter is drawn inside. The theory described black holes as fuzzballs, as matter and energy is drawn into a black hole, it expands, growing the size, a big fuzzball, made of strings. String theory predicts that all the mass of a black hole is not getting squeezed into the center, to a single point, but then the particles get stretched into strings, and the strings start to stretch and expand, and this fuzzball that expands will fill up the entirety of the black hole. In this sense the string theory almost certainly holds the answer to Hawking's paradox, and that the fuzzball theory remains the most likely solution for Hawking's information paradox. The physicists discovered that Hawking's paradox might be resolved by string theory. The black hole radiates like any other normal body with this fuzzball structure, hence there is no puzzle. The old picture of the black hole, where the black hole can be thought of as simply empty space with all its mass in the center, was attempted to be reconciled with Hawking's conclusions in studies conducted in more recent years. According to one idea, the wormhole paradigm, black holes might be one end of a space-time bridge. As a result, anything that entered a black hole might appear on the other end of the bridge, or the other end of the wormhole, in a different location in space and time. However, some low-energy radiation would need to escape from the black hole's edges in order for the wormhole model to be plausible. The issue is on the right track, at least, but far of being resolved, from the complementarity principle, to holographic principle, and quantum computers leading the way of testing the quantum gravity itself, quantum complexity, possibility to investigate wormholes, well all those concepts are what we will see in the next decade. 
The future seems bright and heavily rewarding. Thanks for watching.